The Small Business Show, episode 376 for Wednesday, April 20th, 2022. (music) Greetings, folks, and welcome to The Small Business Show here at businessshow.co, the show where we are small business-ing every week. And when we say we... We don't just mean us, the two of us, Shannon and me, that host the show. We mean you, too. We're all small businessing every week. Sponsors that are also small businessing, or businessing, depending on the size of their business, uh, include Rate Tracker, presented by SkySale Solutions at sky-sale, S-A-I-L.com slash rate tracker, and hunterdouglas.com slash S-B-S. We'll talk more in depth about each of those. Hunter Douglas has got some rebates for you they want to share. And Rate Tracker is going to be able to get your merchant processing presented in a way that you actually understand it and you don't get screwed. So some great stuff from some great sponsors for now here in Durham, New Hampshire. I'm Dave Hamilton. And here in Lafayette, California, I'm Shannon Jean. Excited. Had a little rain last night, a little snow up in the mountains here. It's amazing for uh, this time of year in California. So right. having a good day. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Yeah. Is that, what's that the second time this year it's rained for you? But uh, uh, yeah, I think yeah. so. <laughs> <laughs> We're supposed to rain again Thursday. Oh Friday, my goodness. So I'm, I'm uh, it's a, it's a miracle. That's miracle, great. So that's exciting. Yeah. 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 It's, it's good. It helps keep the fires down. Right. Cause uh, that's right. <laughs> that's the next, that's yeah. the next season we roll into out here in California. Yeah, it's fire season. Man. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. 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 You know, hopefully but, uh, this fire season is not as um, yeah. exciting as last year's was. I think so. There is, if, if, if for nothing else, there is less to burn, right? Well, there's so, that. Uh, yeah. I, fair. Yeah, yeah. So it's good, but yeah. things are happening. Things are good. It's um, good. You know, we're, uh, I let, we do a pre-show ramble uh, yeah. that I think was really po- uh, productive for us today. We're going to have some new things coming your way. We started talking about um, different names for the show. I know I brought that up last week and we've got, yeah. we've got some good ones cooking. If you've got uh, a name for us, feedback at businessshow.co. We would love to, we'd love to hear your thoughts on, or maybe you want us to keep the existing name. This is, it's your call. Let us know. It's actually, you know, we'll, we'll make the call. Kind together. of your call, but yeah, we'll make it together. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Certainly. We can we'll now or us. forever hold your peace. There you go. Yeah. yeah. Feedback at business show.co. Hey, I was looking around this week at small business stuff and there's, um, HR 3807, which the house passed this week, $55 billion fund that'll help that is targeted at small businesses. Now, it's targeted at specific small businesses. They've got okay. 42 billion of this fund for restaurants, food trucks, wineries, breweries, and bakeries. And this fund is has been created um you know partially because of the you know lingering changes from the pandemic, but also and and I realize some of these things are lingering changes from the pandemic, but things that very real things like inflation, supply chain issues, continuing labor shortages, right? Like businesses are going to need more. And so, uh, like I said, 42 for people in the, the food and drink service. And then okay. 13 billion will go to gyms, event venues, theaters, transportation contractors, and sports teams. Now, hopefully we're not talking about professional sports teams. I, I doubt that. There has to be some kind of... They've been making a lot of money with... Minor the, league. With TV revenue. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But like, yeah. But yeah. like, I thought this was, this was great. And they said that you can go and apply for grants from 2,500 to 25,000 in several cities and counties already. So, mm-hmm. uh, so there you go. That's great. Yeah. Well, we'll see. You know, hopefully that... Uh, I'm always a big fan of getting back the money that we're paying the government. Yep, because um, you can't forget the government has no money, right? We're, we're they have it's our, our money. money, right? Yeah, it's our money. Yeah, we and get some so, of it back, maybe. Yeah, yeah, yeah maybe, <laughs> maybe. But um, we're recording this the I mean, day after we paid our yes. personal income taxes, so you know. Yep, yep. I yep. see lots of uh, uh, and the IRS posts on Twitter <laughs> yesterday. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, but yeah, I think I it's think, great. I think everything that I got in in payroll protection, I want to pay back. So there yeah. You go. Well, yeah. it kept, yeah. kept things going, I guess. Yeah, no, it was good to have it while we had it. Take. It's all yeah. given back. Those, okay. those weren't loans, by the way. Those were grants, but, you know, they, they, yeah. they come get it other ways, you see. <laughs> yeah. No, yeah. I think it's great. And, and I think that, you know, uh, 
I have mixed feelings. I'm not a big fan of government. I think, you know, the farther up you get in the, in the chain, the more disconnected they are from our, our lives. But, you know, helping businesses, especially those ones that were really impacted. Yeah. Um, you know, I think it's, it's always a good thing. And, and I think yeah, restaurants know, and the theaters, stuff, man, like the, yeah. the you know, the, like that, that's a huge part of what got hit really hard. So, yeah. yeah. And, you know, may, I, one thing I'd love to see as well is, and I know money is great, but also um, some kind of commitment. I think it could be a powerful message if, if you were in local politics or state politics, uh, especially would be, you know, I'm committed to eliminating, you know, X number of rules and regulations related to your business. Oh, right? interesting. X number of, uh, you know, red tape or paperwork or fees or this kind of thing. Because I think that's a big challenge, at least, especially in California, I should say. Not at least, but especially. Oh, yeah, uh, that's right. Oh, you guys right? are. Yeah, yeah. You guys are lousy with Yeah, it's with tough to do anything, there. you know, here. Yeah. Uh, and, with, and so I think that would be a way that uh, to gain lots of support and you wouldn't have to necessarily, you know, write a big check, you know, giving money back, but you're going to let these businesses keep some of their money yeah. and, and lower some of the fees that they're going to But pay. that's how it used to be oh. just to be, I mean, you know, those of us that, that don't live in California, that don't choose to live there, I, we're all petrified of having nexus defined in California for our businesses. Right. Because as soon as nexus is defined, then you have yep. to start paying, you know, taxes and, and the the lowest amount that you'll pay is eight hundred bucks a year just for the privilege of having Nexus yes. in California. And that's that, a, that's, that that'd be the first thing to wipe out, right? Because you, it <sighs> takes about five minutes to file. <laughs> you know, oh, it's super and, fast. And, they and, they take my money very quickly. Yeah, but, and they want eight hundred bucks. And even though it's okay, it's not a lot of money. But when you're, I mean, I run multiple businesses. Yeah. And every time I pay, you know, I know. You, you pay more net, this kind of stuff, but sure. when you want to start something new and you're not even sure it's going to work and generate still revenue. Still 800 bucks. It's still 800 bucks. That's it. And it's just a barrier to entry. So I would love to see more of that. I, I think um, I, I, so I would love to see more or less of that, depending on how you look at the, yeah, <laughs> but, yeah, you know, yeah, less, exactly. less taken. Uh, but that's relatively new in California, right? Like the last 10 years, I think, yeah, you know, because yeah, that's right. the state was out of money. So they, they looked at, okay, well, look, there's yeah. all these, there's all these out of state businesses that are doing business here. Like we can, we can go get them and, and here's yeah, how exactly. we do this. And I think, unfortunately, that that is going to only get worse before it gets better, not just in California, but everywhere. No, that's correct. Because it, because yeah. of online businesses. I mean, I used to joke that, you know, people would say, well, where's your business incorporated? I said, y have you ever notice when you're driving from like, you know, around here in New England, we, we change states all the time. You know, I can drive to Maine in 10 minutes. I can drive to Massachusetts in about 30. And I'd say, you know, you probably don't notice it. But when you cross the border, there's a little crack between the two states. That's where my business lives is right in between the cracks, you know, of the states. <laughs> That's right. It, because, yeah. it, there, you know, at, at the time, geez, 20 years ago. An online business had no home. It had no taxable yes. home. You know, you could sort of pick and choose. And I would say, well, I incorporated in Texas, which has very, very favorable franchise tax rules. And uh, meaning I I don't think I've ever paid the state of Texas anything. And that's legal. Like, I'm not screwing them. I'm not doing anything yeah. against the law. That's just how it works. Right. And so it was like, I just organized there and that was it. And, you know, that's been chipped away at by all the other states since then. Yeah. And I think that it kind of has to because they're losing also in the last 20 years, they've lost all the brick and mortar tax, or lot, not all, but lots of the brick and mortar taxes that they were getting. And so it's got to come from somewhere, you know. Yeah. And, yeah. and I, I think over the last couple of years, that sales tax equation has been solved, meaning, you know, yes. you're paying sales, sales tax, tax but, but that's yeah. not business. Like here in New Hampshire, yeah. we have a business enterprise tax, which oh, yeah. okay. I now have yeah. to pay. I honestly, I didn't used to have to pay it, but they changed yeah. the, the way you define nexus. And now it's like, Oh, guess what? You know? And, and of course they changed it a number of years ago. I think last year I paid about 13 grand in, uh, in, in business past due, business nexus fees and penalties and interest and all that yeah. crap. But, but yeah, it's not just sales. You're right. The sales tax thing has mostly been solved. Mostly. Yep. Yeah. But the, the other, and the other fees and, and, uh, but like the whole yeah, nexus yeah. tax, franchise taxes are the, 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 the you know, tax. that's yeah. the thing that, 
I think we're going to see it worse. Um, yeah. Before it gets better. So, you know, if you're thinking about it, you want to, especially your local and state, you know, politicians, assembly people, you know, different state representatives. Those are folks that really have a direct impact on your business and you need to seek those people out and yeah. support them. Uh, the ones that you, um, you know, agree with on the way they manage yeah. things and, and uh, be fit, you know, you got to be physically responsible. Like California is just, you know, it's oh, yeah. Thing because there's just a gazillion people here and all this. It's its own set of problems, but sure. Just yeah, every state's at. different, which is yeah, how it is. But, and states, yeah, but states at, do I need to, to operate. I mean, they yeah. need the money from somewhere, but yeah. that's right, that's right. But yeah. getting involved, you know, meeting those people, uh, they want to talk to you, especially if you're a business owner. Um, you're a stakeholder. You're you are considered a, a, a higher level of of a voter. If you own a business and if you tell them that and reach out, they'll, they'll, they'll make listen time for you. You, you yeah. can share these thoughts with them. And uh, I would encourage you to do that. If uh, you know, you need to, you need to speak out and protect your interests and uh, that works. It can work. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. 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 The more people they hear from, the more That's people it. they hear from. Then yep. That, that, uh, yep. They want to get elected us. the next time. So yeah. And yeah. most, you know, the thing is, most small business owners don't have a lot of time. Um, and, you know, we're going to talk about compartmentalizing your time here today uh, after the uh, the sponsor break. But that's oh, no, 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 no. I got to stop you there. You can dismiss yes. me on things about state taxes and that's fine. But we never call it a break for sponsors. Ah, Our listeners yeah, don't. Right. They're not getting a break. We are telling you it's about value. people yeah. that 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 are. Yes, they're paying us. But they are also companies that, that, you know, we are happy to present to you. So it's not that's a break. Right. Yeah. It's not a break. Yeah, we use their services as well. For yeah. Sure. It's, that's it's, right. It's good stuff. But yeah. um, that's one of the things, compartmentalizing a little bit of time to reach out to your local representatives can really help and uh, can get your voice heard and actually promote your business as well because they yeah. like success stories and they want to to help people in their districts and that kind of stuff. So, yeah. Yeah. Good stuff. Well, well it is... Uh, we do want to talk about compartmentalization. Uh, and first, it is time for our sponsor segment, if that works for you, Mr. Shannon Jean. Yeah, it does. I'm ready. Yeah. All right. Our first sponsor for today is Rate Tracker, presented by SkySail Solutions, your trusted payments partner. I can't tell you how important it is to have a trusted payments partner. Actually, I can because I already have. We ranted about this on an episode not that long ago about payment partners that both Shannon and I had had in the past that were not to be trusted, that tried to screw us, to be perfectly frank, who were out there obscuring all the fees and hiding the way that they charged us and all that is. And, you know, payment processing is confusing as it is. And then when you have companies that are actually literally out to, like, mislead you, it's terrible. And this is why I am so thankful that Rate Tracker is here because Rate Tracker is a free solution, free, which allows you to easily and automatically understand your bottom line credit card processing rates and fees every month. Like I said, Rate Tracker is a free and simple way for you as a small business owner to know your costs to accept payments so you don't get lied to or taken advantage of by your payment processor because there's too many of them out there who are literally doing just that. And so with Rate Tracker, it's it's just super simple and you can understand your costs to accept payments and Rate Tracker provides you with free access to trusted payment experts like SkySale Solutions which can give you free advice on how to optimize your payment acceptance program. And with Rate Tracker there, you'll know that experts like SkySale Solutions are treating you right because Rate Tracker is going to show it to you. It's a perfect fit here. Visit sky-sale.com slash rate tracker to sign up for the only service that's dedicated to helping you know your numbers, keep track of your payment processing costs, and will alert you immediately if there's ever a rate increase our thanks to Rate Tracker, presented by SkySail Solutions, for sponsoring this episode. Next up is Hunter Douglas, because Hunter Douglas is here to help you live well, to be perfectly at ease, in comfort, and in style. And Hunter Douglas does just that with their innovative window shade designs, their gorgeous fabrics, 
and control systems so advanced they can be scheduled to automatically adjust to their optimal positions throughout the day. And you've got to go to hunterdouglas.com slash SBS, and you can see the way that you can enjoy the view outside the window while protecting your privacy inside. You can see the superior insulation that these shades provide, keeping you warmer in the winter and cooler in the summer and lowering your utility bills. And you can see the way these shades diffuse harsh sunlight to cast a beautiful glow across the room. And then you'll learn about Hunter Douglas's power view technology, which is what lets you set your shades to automatically reposition for the perfect balance of light, privacy, and insulation morning, noon, and night. You can learn how to live beautifully with Hunter Douglas, enjoying greater convenience, enhanced style, and increased comfort in your home throughout the day. And right now, for a limited time, you, a small business show listener, can take advantage of generous rebate savings opportunities on select styles. Visit HunterDouglas.com slash SBS for details. That's HunterDouglas.com slash SBS. And our thanks to Hunter Douglas for sponsoring this episode. All right. Now that we've compartmentalized the conversation about the small business grant and then had a tangential, unexpected, unplanned, compartmentalized conversation about uh-huh. business franchise taxes in each state. Yes. And then we compartmentalized our discussion about our sponsors. Now it's time to compartmentalize a discussion about compartmentalization. Is that right? That's pretty good. Okay. You've boiled it down. <laughs> well, I, I don't know if it's boiled down. That seemed pretty long-winded to me. <laughs> maybe yeah, maybe what I did was I compartmentalized a conversation about the various compartments of this episode. Yes. There okay. we go. There That's we go. Good. That's good. I, I want to talk about this, beca- and, and I was spurred into this uh, to to uh, be transparent. Uh, uh, There's a great podcast called uh, How to Take Over the World, okay. which I really like. And it talks about leaders, good and bad, and how they they uh, have done things. Everything from Napoleon to Putin to Walt Disney, all this stuff. And one of the traits, many of them, if not all of them shared, is how to compartmentalize. And I thought about my own life and all the highs and lows and, you know, small business in, in my businesses and everything. And I was like, man, if I didn't compartmentalize, I would have gone insane. Mm. And uh, so I want to talk about it today and and talk mainly about the why it's important, but also then about the how, you know, some tips and tricks to to get better at it. Sure. If, uh, sure. So, yeah, yeah, I think I, th- I think it'd be worthwhile. And I've never heard know, of this show, How to Take Over the World. I, 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 I'm i going to. It's pretty good. I'm, I'll put a link in the show good. notes. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. That's yeah. cool. I, I, I've enjoyed it. You know, it's just one guy and he's kind of talking about some stuff I think he read from a couple of books or something sure. or learned about and it's but it's it's it's, it's worthwhile. Yeah. Um you know but for me like I, I'm a uh I always say you know, I'm a top line person. I'm always looking how to generate more sales and that's my solution to solving every problem. Sure. It doesn't work all the time but uh all right. you know, <laughs> that's fine. I'm running around. <laughs> I talk about managing by walking around a lot and just you know talking to everybody and putting out fires, problem solving mentality. We did a show on that, you know, a little while ago. Yeah. And there, there just seems like there's thousands of things going on that require our attention and, you know, hundreds of decisions that you, that need to be made all the time for small business owners. And if, if we can think and focus about uh, how to compartmentalize those things, not only does it make us better business owners, but I also just think it makes us better people and spouses and parents and friends. And so I, I want to touch on on that a little bit as we walk through this. No, that makes sense. Yeah, I, I yeah. find it super valuable. You know, I, we've, I, I don't think on this show we've ever called it compartmentalization, but we've talked about spotlighting, the idea of yes. focusing on something and while you're focusing on it and then not thinking about it when you're focusing on the next thing and and being present for all of it to use you know terms that are that are popular these days right like that there, yes. there's a lot to be said for that uh, like you said not just in business but in your personal life with your kids and your your spouse and all of that good stuff yeah yeah if you can if if you can folk or think about this topic and then put in practice some of the things that I'm going to share with you i think it can help um, it certainly has helped me all the way around yeah. because 
you know, I can remember coming home from work, but I really didn't come home from work. Oh yeah. Right? Oh, and that's a, there, <laughs> there you go. Coming home yeah. from work and not coming home from work. Yeah. There's, there's a title yeah. for the show in there, for the episode in there that's somewhere. Right, that's right. Like, and, you know, and to your point, um, being present with whoever you're speaking with and interacting with is really powerful and important and, and let's face it required with your family and that kind of thing. Yeah. Um, but compartmentalizing can, can help you with that, help you focus on someone. And, and one of the ways to be successful is to be able to really focus on whoever you're interacting with, whether each a client, an employee, your your husband or wife or your kids, you know, and our partner, whatever, those people want your attention. And if, if you can't give it to them, it's going to be harder for you to connect on another level that is required to be successful. Yeah. I agree. Right. I, yeah. It's, I so, see. I'm, I'm totally distracted now because there's a great title somewhere in here. Like, like something like I was thinking, your your body's home, but your head's at work, yeah, right? You know, you, exactly. or you you left your head at work. There's something in there. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know or what it is. But. You could flip it, and you left your head at home. You had a problem in the morning, ah. or, kids, or there's something going on with one of your kids. You know, there's a phrase that I love. Not to segue too far, but I, I heard this from <laughs> we're on a tangent, a FedEx, folks. Yeah. yeah, a FedEx rep that I had uh, years ago, and he said, I don't know if he was the first one who said it. Probably not, but it was. You're, you were only as happy as your unhappiest kid. Oh, <laughs> as a parent. Yeah. And I was like, wow. And I've revisited that in many ways. And it is really true. So you can show up to work or your office, you know, your facility and, and be back at home and really not connect and not be, you know, uh, not be there. So, totally. so compartmentalization can help you with all those things. And back to that, you know, uh, how to rule the world or whatever that, that how podcast I mentioned, yeah. how to take over the world. Some of the most brutal dictators in the world uh, are masters at compartmentalization. You know, they could destroy. Well, they were sociopaths. Populations. I mean, let, let's, sociopaths. let's be yes, fair. Yes. A, a sociopath yes. is, is a master at compartmentalization. I think that's sort of yes. the, the, the core of the definition, right? Is yeah. Yeah, I'm so just we don't want do you to go thing. that far. Don't go that far. We want right. you to, to realize <laughs> the, the power in it. And yeah. for me, with compartmentalization, the the biggest thing I it helps me from feeling overwhelmed. And there are times when I start stacking all the requirements and things. Even even now, when my life is less complex than it used to be, in in many ways, uh, you start stacking up the, all the things you've got to take care of, and I've got to speak at this event. I got to come up with this. I want to launch this, and all these things. Yeah, it it, it can be overwhelming, um, and so. Thinking about, okay, I've got to parse these things out separately, you know, can, can really help you. Um, I also think it makes you a better leader. And, you know, it, part of being a leader is, is having the sense that when people look at you, they feel like you are in control, right? I think. Interesting. And the more you are surrounded by chaos, disaster, you know, problems, and the more you can compartmentalize and focus on each individual thing, the better you are perceived as a leader. And when you're perceived as a leader, uh, you, you know, you have good leadership skills. It, it helps make you a better leader and people will follow you more because you can come in. You're like the fire, you know, the, the firefighter, you can come yeah. in and just go, okay, let's, what, what's the problem? And, and you maybe have a department head or an employee that's flipping out. Okay. Let's, Lay, break it down into the essential sector, you know, things and, yep. and you can solve it or at least present a possible solution that they can try. Well, that, yeah. And, and then and that's often the key to problem solving yep. is just saying, Hey, let's, you know, what's one thing that could be different than just living with the problem forever. <laughs> right. Like, you know, yeah. And, and, and you try something, you and, try and something. Thing, yeah. 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 And you can't panic, <laughs> you know, you, right. you, but if you're, if you're in a meeting and you start talking and it's just one problem after the next, after the next, it, it's just, as you I'm sure have had before, it's just not productive. No. So you can be the, the leader that helps your other people, other people compartmentalize things and break it down. Okay. What's going on in the sales? What's, what's problem in the tech department for me, my you know background and how do we solve this and what logistics problem are we having? And okay, let's try this. And, yeah. and you don't even have to be, 
the one who comes up with a solution, but it helps if you can facilitate coming up with that solution and it, and it, it, it makes you a better leader. Definitely. And it makes you look more in control. Like I said, yeah. Uh, even yeah. if inside your head is just spinning around like, oh my gosh, what are we going to do? This is a nightmare, you know? <laughs> and I've got a story I'm going to share with you about that. Okay. Um, and uh, so the other part I- We have to wait for the story, lot. folks. Just bear, bear with us. Wait. Bear with us. Yeah. we got a story yeah. coming it's up. Worth, it's worth the wait. I, I've I mentioned here on the show before, but yeah. I, I want to walk you through these steps. No, it's the, good. The how and the why first. Yeah, no, yeah. I get it. Yeah, um, yeah. I love the concept of managing by walking around and- when you're walking through your sales department or whatever, in my case, the techni technical, the warehousing, you know, the, the customer service, you, you, when you close that door from one department to the to another, you need to really talk about being present and you need to focus on those people and, and really shine the light of your attention on them. Uh, how's it going? What's going on? Great. Oh, that's good. You know, how, what problems are coming up? compartmentalizing helps you do that. You don't want to carry those problems or, you know, even successes. If things are going great in the sales department, but then you walk in the next room and the technicians are up in arms because sales has done something that causes them a lot of problems. Well, you need to focus and, and help them uh, feel like their problems are important too. And you want to help them solve those. Yep. So, um, and, and I think it, it compartmental compartmentalization. It's one of those words, the more you say it, the more it sounds like nothing. Um, but it, it makes you more productive dramatically. It's a massive shift on productivity. If you can break things down into, into smaller chunks. And then finally, I think one of the really key things that we talk about on the show a lot is support from your spouse and your family. And, you know, there's a lot of people out there and I've, I've used this, I've had this uh, conversation lately with a few people that, there are folks that go out in the business world and are great and they're just on and everybody loves them. But by the time they get home, they may be burnt out on it and they just want to shut down and they're just not present. And I, I've been there. It's a, uh, uh, you yeah. know, it, it, it some happens. days that's what you wind up with, right? You're, you're, yeah. you're burned. You're done. Yep. Yes. Yep. Yeah. So learning how to compartmentalize, which is we're going to talk about next is, can help you at home dramatically. And I always say you should treat your family members just like your customers, just as good as your customers. Yeah. Just think about it. Yeah. Your relationships will improve. You know, you compartmentalize things, shift your focus to the people at, at home, just like you do at work. It, it can really, it can really pay off. And, and if you can't do it automatically, you know, for a, Oh yeah, that's okay. Well, <laughs> you know, find tricks. I, I've yes. found, you know, I've worked from home for a long time, de you know, decades. And but I have worked away from home. And and there's something special about that commute, right? That that drive home is a perfect time to a good point. extract yeah. your brain from whatever you were doing at work before you immerse it in whatever you're going to be doing at home for the evening. It, 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 you know, driving is a very meditative, hypnotic thing. Where your brain, you know, hopefully you're not asleep while you're driving because that's super dangerous. But your brain is is not as actively engaged, right? You're engaged with driving, but that's it, right? You're not, theoretically, you're not on the phone. You're not being presented with new problems or, you know, new input. You're processing some of the existing input. And then hopefully you get a little moment where you're not processing anything. And then you get home and you can sort of, you know, engage with that with perhaps a much fresher mind. I found that taking a shower at the end of the day can mm, be that's interesting. valuable in the same way because it's that same sort of hypnotic meditative thing. You know, it's, yeah. it's, it's, I'm, I'm alone. I'm not at work. I am technically at home, but I've been at home all day, you know, but I'm, I'm not engaging with the family quite yet. And that if I need it, that, shower can be a perfect little thing or you can go for a walk or something but you know give yourself that and it doesn't need to be long like you know there's a beauty of working at home and not having a 90 minute commute each way right so don't sure. don't do that to yourself but you know give yourself 10 minutes of not work and you'll find that your evenings with your family can be a whole lot more refreshed and and active and energized and all of that stuff so 
Just, you know, find like your it. thing, whatever your thing is. It's, you know, yeah, I, it's these simple, days I've been playing right. my drums at the end of a uh, workday and I'll, you know, I'll play oh, for a half great. hour and it's great because now I, then I just go home. It's like, okay, perfect. Yeah. Yeah. Even you're like signaling to your brain, like, okay, now it's, now it's a shift. It's right? a shift. We're, right. We're yeah. Change what we're doing. Exactly. I, exactly. I like it. Yeah. 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 So I, I really believe that com compartmentalization is, can you learn it? I think Absolutely. you already know how to do it. Your your yeah. your mind knows how to do it, but I think you can also train it to to do it better, right? Yeah. And one of the things I you know we're all vi our our minds are visual learners. No matter what, it, it's no matter who you are. If you can think of it in pictures, it really can help you achieve things. And I, one of the things I like the, you know to do with com to compartmentalize is really think of that your mind has these separate rooms, you know, just it's, mm. it's a great analogy. When you get done with one task or idea, or whatever it is, close the door and move on down the hallway to the next thing. You know, remind yourself that, hey, those things are, are, are safe back there. They're, you know, when I need to come back to them, they're going to be, they'll be there and when I'm ready to deal with them. You don't need to think about them right now because they're, they're closed off and, and they're fine. That I've read other people that talk about it's like I'm going on a trip and I only load things in the car that I need for this one task, oh. you know, this one idea. Yeah, yeah. Um, so whatever works for you, it's just like the taking a shower, playing the drums, driving home. You, you think about these tools that can help you, uh, you know, be actively compartmentalizing. Because if it's not happening naturally, you're going to have to train yourself a little bit more. Yeah, everybody's um, brain's different, but you got to find your things that allow yeah. you to, you know, immerse yourself in any given task, project, you know, whatever it is, and then get out of that and go immerse yourself in the next thing. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, multitasking you, doesn't work. It, it's exactly. a misnomer. It's a myth. Multitasking yeah, a myth. is just, it's yeah. just BS. It yeah. kills your productivity. Yep. The, the, the much more powerful system is to compartmentalize and focus on one thing at a time Get that to the point where you can set it aside. It doesn't have to be done, but you're going to achieve something towards that, uh, and then you're going to you're going to move on. Yeah. And there's just a ton of tools to use, especially with technology. You know, whether it's a Notepad app, you know, on your phone, or even just a pad of paper you keep in your pocket. Uh, timers, the tomato thing. What, what's that? The uh, Pomodoro method. Pomodoro method, where you you give yourself twenty minutes, and when the thing rings, you stop and you go on to the next thing. Yeah. Um, whatever you want to carve out that time for the one thing that you need to work on. Like for me, the reminders app on my phone is just a lifesaver because I am so easily distracted. It's ridiculous. You know, I'm I'm always like squirrel, and uh, but. I can grab my phone, set a reminder. Hey, uh, remind me at you know two o'clock to do X. You know, and and it just whatever it works uh, to you. Whether it's a to do list, some people love those. Yep. I'm not a, as huge a fan. I, I still do it, but I'm much more productive with a to did list. And if you don't know what that is, just go to businessshow.co and search for to did, and you'll you'll uh, you can see what I have to say about that. Um, I think breaking down larger tasks. I want to. I want to share pieces. a a tip though. If yes. especially if you're using an iPhone, which I know a lot of people are using these days, I find if I am using Siri to set to remind myself of something, if I yeah. don't tell it a day or a time, yes, it disappears into a black hole. It's still there, but it I'm will afraid. not be at the top of my list. So I, you know, I'll I'll say. Siri, remind me to prep small business show today or or tomorrow. I mean, you can say whatever day you want, but saying today or like you said at two o'clock, like that's fine. Yeah, you you need, can I set put a time on it because I have, fine. I found if I just say a day, it kind of I don't you know it doesn't remind me. Well, that's you. So you always, you don't like to do lists. I I love yeah. to do lists. I can. Yeah. You know, I compartmentalize my life by a to-do list and it's okay. like, okay, I just go down it and I'm really, you know, I, I'm moving things around. But but if I don't say today, then it's not on my to-do list for today. It's on my to-do list all the way at the bottom. It's like, well, that's not going to help me. Yeah, I'm never going to see it. Yeah. So, no, yeah, just okay. if, you're, if you're using it that way, st say a day or a time and or a date even if you care to, you know, like, but some temporal anchor. Otherwise, you will not get any benefit out of this at all. So, yeah, makes sense. Yeah. And then the last one on my list is really if if it helps you setting schedules to get specific types of work done 
I think is really totally. powerful to help you compartmentalize. So if you need to write or create content, uh, you know, okay, I'm going to write from 8 a.m. to 9 a.m. every single day, or I handle, you know, customer service from, you know, noon to two, whatever it is, set those schedules and try to stick to them as much as you can and, and close out those distractions other that would, would interact with you. Don't check your email, yep. you know, turn off all those crazy notifications on your phone. <laughs> I mean, that, that's Apple, I, you know, and we're Apple fans here. Apple's focus modes in the, the yeah. latest operating systems game changers for me. I can like when I'm podcasting right now, I'm in podcasting focus mode. The only people that I can get messages from are you because you and I do this show together. Paul Kent, because he and I do Gig Gab together, our musician show. And John Braun, because we do Mac Geek Gab together. My family's That's messages great. don't get through no one else's messages. And I could be even more granular and have a small business show focus and a Gig Gab, but I haven't like it hasn't been a problem yet, <laughs> but it really makes a difference because that way, if you need me while we're doing the show, like, hey, Dave, I'm running out of time or, you know, whatever. Yeah. I see those messages, but I don't see the messages. You know, it's not like all or nothing like it used to be a year ago. It makes a huge difference. I, I, I yeah, like I game changer. Yep. It is. Yeah. Oh, yep. That's great. That's good. I, I need to, to get better at that. It, yeah. Uh, well, you know, when I when it's funny, we were doing a show on our Mac Geek Gab show sometime over the summer, last summer, and while all of this stuff was in beta and John, my co-host there, asked me, well, so what do you think about this focus mode? I'm like, ah, it seems stupid and too complex. I don't think it's going to, I don't think it's going to click, you know? And then, I don't know, a month later, I, I actually dove into it a little bit more and was like, oh, wait, 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 wait. I was so wrong. <laughs> yeah. It's so easy. So I, I recommend checking it out. Yeah. That's cool. Yep. So those are those are my tips. I I, I want to share. You know. Yeah. Well, you uh, promised us the story, man. I, I'm going to share a story. I, let, let's call it the million dollar distraction. Okay. And we used to host these big parties at at uh, one of my businesses, and we had a big, huge, massive warehouse, and we'd you know we'd carve out a big section and have a big Halloween party. And um, I can remember trying to you know oh, it's going to be great. We're having we invited everybody, suppliers, you know partners, sure. uh, you know, adv our advisors, customers. It was just a lot of fun, do, you know, once a year kind of thing. And I can remember getting uh, served with a bunch of legal documents the day before we had this party and all hell, you know, kind of raining down on me about, oh, wow, I didn't know we had this problem <laughs> oh, <laughs> until man. that day. Right. Right. And that's how those things go, having, folks. Random yeah, Tuesdays. Yep. Yeah, that's right. And then, you know, as a young business owner, I, I you know, okay, I've got all these people com coming. They, you know, they all want to talk with me, see me, you know, interact with me. I've got to be positive. My, my wife was there. I had a new, you know, little kid. Uh, and, you know, getting through that first night and being able to not be so freaked out, talk to people as if everything was going to be great and, <laughs> and tell my story. You know, I always say this, uh, cause I always convince myself, I'm always telling my story and how it's going to work out. And it was the first day of what would be like two years of hell oh. going through. If you've ever been through a really large legal battle, it, it, especially as a small business, you know, where you're always yeah. short on cash and all this kind of stuff. It, it's just a horrific distraction. And I, I that, feel that like, is the you know, understatement have... of the year. <laughs> and I, 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 I wish I couldn't qualify that, but it's brutal. Yep. yep. That's how it works. It, it's, you know, those, they have those seminars and at the end, you know, you walk through your coals or barefoot on a bed of coals or whatever. I really felt like looking back, I felt like I, had, was doing that for for two years, and I can imagine I can remember just actively having to force myself to walk in the door every day and be upbeat. And you know, I didn't know if my business was going to make it through this battle. Sure, um, but I, you know, I, I was like, I've got to keep focused for these people and for my family. And at, a couple of times during that whole thing, I I recalled not even wanting to look at myself in the mirror. Oh. And I was like, "Wow, man! I just cannot." I, and I and I, I mean, I've, I've told this story in more detail in the show, but I sure I started telling myself this cannot be the defining moment of my business career. Right? It can't be. Right. And and I even got to the point where I would force myself to look in the mirror, and as I was getting, you know, you get ready and all this stuff in the morning, and 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 even 
took it another step where I would kind of pound myself in the chest and be like, I can get through this. I can get through this. Huh. And I tell this story now because it was incredibly difficult and not to, and I don't tell it to, to, you know, make myself look better because it wasn't, I made a mistake and I paid the price for it. And, uh, you know, there, there was no way to go diagonal. And I thought I was a shortcut and there just wasn't. Right. Um, but it did turn out to be, uh, you know, a really turning point in my business career because I learned if I could compartmentalize this, it's just another problem I had to solve. And I even, at, during arbitration with this, you know, massive global company, I finally just said, what's it going to take guys? And they, you know, and they threw out a number that they just thought was just impossible. And I said, okay, okay. And it was a million dollars. We'll pay you a million bucks. I, I just knew. And I told my attorneys and I go, we just have to have to do this. Cause I need to go back to work tomorrow and I can figure yeah. out a way to make a million dollars. That yep. that's another problem altogether. Yep. But I cannot sit and fight this battle every day and be so distracted. No, Cause you're not going to make, you're going to make zero fighting yes. that battle. Yeah. No, that, yeah, that's a battle of you're right. I'm wrong, whatever. <sighs> okay. That, that was one thing, but it was, it's like, I, you know, and so compartmentalizing my life, I felt it, I, that's where I really learned how to do this. Yeah. And it served me very well. I don't recommend anybody ever pay a, you know, write a million dollar check to learn that lesson. But <laughs> uh, no, I, it, I don't think it, anybody would choose to do that. Yeah. You, you were in a scenario where, where it, at least from your perspective in that seat at that moment, that was yeah, the best yeah. path out. And it worked it out was. okay for you. Like, in it, fact, yeah, it worked out know, great I, for you. You said it, it wasn't going to be the defining I, moment of your career. I would right. argue the opposite. I think the success of getting through that has been hugely defining for you. It has. It has. And yeah. now that I'm, I can look back on it, you of know, course. Uh, uh, 15 years later or whatever, I can kind of, you know, talk about it as a lesson. But yeah. right then, you know, back then it was so raw. I just could, it was just brutal. And, right. Right. Uh, no, I, I get that. I don't mean to, yeah, so <laughs> to dismiss it. Focusing yeah. and learning how to compartmentalize will help you because it, it, especially small business owners, you know, it, things are going to happen way beyond your, out, out of your control yep. that are going to seem like disasters. And it's up to you to stand up and be a leader and talk, okay, we're going to get through this. This is just another problem and we're going to figure it out. Uh, and as everything goes to hell around you, you're the one y you want everyone to look at to you. You don't want to, you, you just can't be running around crazy. You just, you, you can't, you have yeah. to be the leader and learning how to compartmentalize better uh, will, will help you be that better leader. So that's, yeah. that's my story. And, you know, I, I would love to hear tips about, you know, things that you've done in your, your business career that have taught you how to compartmentalize and ways you've, you've done it. Business or feedback at businessshow.co is where you share it. Um, or go to businessshow.co slash Facebook. We've got a lot of activity up in the small business support group, and we'd love to see you there. Yeah, and let us know what, what more you would like to see there, too, from us. This is, you know, we... We see this as a community, although I, I, I will be the first to admit that we have not been excellent at cultivating our community, but, but we see it as that. And so we want to do better. Let us know and, and post about it there. Post about it, you know, feedback at businessshow.co. And, and if, if our Facebook group isn't the place that you would like to engage with us, tell us what is. Do you want to like, do you want a discord group? Do you want a Slack group? What do you, what are the things that come to mind as as you say oh here's how I want to like be involved with this community let us know cuz we want to make that happen for you feedback at businessshow.co That's what we got for today right anything else All good man all good I've I've, I've learned a lot talking through it with you Yeah no it's I good to talk through this stuff as well Yeah absolutely yep, yep. Well, he, today is one of those days, Shannon, where I have literally scheduled almost every minute of the day, um, <laughs> and and I am now one minute behind schedule. I, I scheduled 75 minutes for this show. We wound up taking 90 because we had quite an extended pre-show discussion, which is fine. I, you know, there's always a little bit of fudge room in it, but um, but yeah, I had a lot to do today, and uh, and I'm having surgery on my arm in the morning, and so I, I there's some things I want to get done before they slice me open. So you know, that's how it goes. That's what we got. Thanks for checking us uh, checking us out. Thanks for checking out our sponsors. You can see sky sailcom slash rate tracker and hunterdouglas.com slash sbs. And keep living that charm life, Lee. We'll see you next week. Bye.